said I hate my When thinking about the 2022-23 college basketball season, your mind likely takes you to March Madness. And I wouldn't blame you. The NCAA tournament, also known as March Madness or the Big Dance, is the greatest playoff in American sports. 68 teams, single elimination, and one month to determine a national champion. The last season was epic. A 16 seed beat a one seed for only the second time in nearly 40 years. A two seed was ousted by a 15 seed for a third straight season. Shout out to the U of A Wildcats. And there were no one seeds in the Elite Eight. FAU, the Owls, they were remarkable, making their first Final Four while also winning their first ever March Madness game. Man, that Dusty Macon coach. But the tournament was full of chaos and unpredictability, just the way a lot of people like it, with no top seeds being entirely safe. There was only one team, four seed or lower in the Final Four, the UConn Huskies. Only one player in the Final Four was a fringe top 50 high school recruit, per 24-7 sports that is, UConn's Jordan Hawkins. UConn was the best team with the best talent, and it showed as they leisurely captured their fifth title in program history, but how did they get there? As a four seed, it couldn't have possibly been a walk in the park. It's not like they went undefeated and beat everyone by a Benji. Like every championship team, there's always a story, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Using shot quality's advanced data and analytics, let's stroll down memory lane and see how UConn went from preseason on ranked to cutting down the nets at NRG Stadium in Houston. To understand the UConn Huskies men's basketball team is to understand their coach, Dan Hurley. Hurley came to stores at a time when the basketball program was in complete and utter disarray. They were fresh off back-to-back losing seasons, something the program had not done since 1985. Their former bench boss, Kevin Ollie, was just canned with cause for quote-unquote failure to monitor his program and not promoting an atmosphere of compliance. They had ineligible players suiting up, boosters providing money to student-athletes, and illegal gifts getting distributed. Yes, Ollie led UConn to a title, and yes, Courts ruled that UConn improperly fired Ollie and ordered the university to pay him back pay. Nevertheless, the program was at an all-time low during this period. In comes Dan Hurley. The frontman had massive success at Rhode Island, taking him to the NCAA tournament in 2017 and 18, even winning a tourney game and parlaying his accomplishments to the UConn job. Hurley's first year was another poor season by UConn standards, a possible microcosm of the year prior. However, the next season saw the Huskies win 19 games, their most in four seasons. The year after, a return to the Big East in March Madness. They got bounced in the round of 64, but it was another step in the right direction. One of Hurley's first big-time recruits, James Booknight, was instrumental in UConn's swift return to relevancy. The star sophomore averaged 18.7 points per game during the 2020-21 season. The Huskies also had two highly recruited freshmen on the team, Adama Sinogo and Andre Jackson, but we'll get to them later. Fast forward to the next season, and you guessed it, a new wins total record for Hurley and another trip to the NCAA tournament. After book night dip for the NBA, the Huskies relied heavily on upperclassmen that had previously transferred to UConn. RJ Cole and Tyrese Martin were dudes. They also got this freshman named Jordan Hawkins. However, another first round exit for the Huskies. And that brings us to this season, the 2022-23 season. UConn lost top scorers RJ Cole and Tyrese Martin, not to mention they also needed to replace key rotational pieces Isaiah Whaley, Jalen Gaffney, and Tyler Pauly. Now remember Adama Sinogo and Andre Jackson from earlier, the two top prospects that played sparingly two seasons ago? Well, Sinogo was a beast during the 2021-22 campaign, averaging nearly a 15-point double-double, while Jackson was in the top three on the team in steals, assists, and rebounds. Both those cats were returning for their junior seasons. Sharpshooter Jordan Hawkins, who averaged 5.8 points per game the year prior, was also running it back. It's also crucial to mention that Hurley had a highly recruited redshirt freshman on the team waiting in the wings, stretch forward Alex Caravan. They also inked 7'2 center Donovan Klingon. With UConn experiencing a heavy roster turnover from the year prior, the two underclassmen, Caravan and Klingon, were set for real and substantial roles. And remember, Dan Hurley is no silly goose. He has used the transfer portal to his advantage before, examples being RJ Davis and Tyrese Martin, so he worked his magic again to help fill out his roster. Count it. Four big-time transfers headed to UConn. The Huskies snagged guard Tristan Noon, an all-AAC honoree from East Carolina. 
They got a fifth-year senior and three-point sniper in Joey Calcantara. They got a three-year starter at Virginia Tech in Nahima Lean. And they got a former top prospect in Hassan Diara. After the dust settled, the roster screamed death and versatility. They had behemoth centers, Sonogo, Klingon. They had plenty of perimeter shooting, led by Jordan Hawkins. They had length at the forward spots, veteran playmakers, and young high flyers, and a coach that got challenged to make it all work. The start of the season was like a dream come true for the Huskies, who won their first 14 games. Their non-con schedule didn't exactly scream Big Ten basketball in January with wins over Stonehill, Boston, UNC Wilmington, and Delaware State. Still, they had some tough games to end November to start December. The Huskies beat Oregon, Alabama, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, and Florida. Of the 14 wins to start the season, only the Florida game was considered a shock quality loss. They won 75-54 but SQ projected a much closer game, with Florida leaving nearly 20 points out on the court. Colin Castleton, usually a reliable scorer for the Gators, struggled in this game, and shot quality expected him to score 7 more points. However, it was a moot point for UConn as they were coasting, going from unranked in the preseason to the number 2 team in the AP poll. However, we have now reached the point in the story where the hero, UConn in this case, finally runs into a problem. The Huskies went from 14-0 to 16-6 in a blink of an eye. Their longest losing streak? Three games. What about their longest shot quality losing streak? Four games. In the middle of the debauchery, a home loss to St. John's, both a shot quality and real world loss. It's safe to say the defense had a rough night, allowing 83 shot quality points to a poor Red Storm team. Poor defensive performances were the Achilles heel for the Huskies in early January, allowing 74 plus shot quality points in four straight games. They should consider themselves lucky as they went one and three in those games, despite shot quality giving them under a 46% chance to win in any of those contests. As they say, good defenses bend, but they don't break. In break, it did not. Regarding the 2022-23 Huskies, they strengthen their defense and become an ironclad force. At 16 and six, the Huskies headed home for a matchup against the Butler Bulldogs. It was a masterclass performance for UConn, blowing the doors off the Bulldogs in both the real and shot quality box score. They held Butler in the 14th percentile in shot quality's points per possession. It seemed like a one-hit wonder for UConn, with the Huskies dropping their very next game 82-79 to Xavier. Another loss for Hurley and company in another game where the defense just quite frankly didn't show up. Or did they? Shot quality had a final score of 85-67 to in favor of UConn, a huge difference than what the newspapers read the following day. And hey, I get it, basketball isn't played in a simulator or on a computer. Grady Fuson says it well in Moneyball, quote, No baseball isn't just numbers, it's not science, you don't put a team together with a computer, end quote. Well, Billy Bean fires Grady, the A's go on to win 100 games, and we got a fantastic film out of it. And I know, in a vacuum, teams aren't built on computers, and the human element is extreme. But with enough valuable data comes unique illustrations for each team and players. For UConn, the picture is a team that turned the corner on defense and shot quality agreed. Xavier was unconscious from three. They way outperformed the quality of shots they took in the game. Instead of folding, UConn stayed true to their in-season adjustments, going 8-1 to finish the regular season. Five times they kept their opponents to under 66 shot quality points. Offensively, they continued to do what they did all year. They were an elite offensive rebounding team, per the shot quality data. They were also in the top 20 in spacing, passing, and efficient three-point shooting. After a narrow loss to Marquette in the Big East tourney, the Huskies earned a four seed in March Madness. Their first game was a date with Rick Pitino and Iona Gales. Iona was a sexy pick for an upset and even led 39-37 at the break. Like the midseason game against Xavier, UConn was crushing in the shot quality score but just got 39 points hung on them in the first half. UConn answered with a 50 spot in the final 20 minutes and cruised to an 87-83 win. The Huskies finished in the 99th percentile in shot quality's points per possession. They took 58 shots from three or at the rim while maintaining a remarkable 1.17 shot quality PPP. Meanwhile, Iona fell flat in their attempts to run the pick and roll. This was a clear-cut win for the Huskies, 
But like all teams in the first weekend of March Madness, UConn had a quick turnaround, playing St. Mary's in the round of 32. Here's where things got real, real interesting. UConn again struggled in the first 20 minutes, nursing a 31-30 lead at the half. The 4-5 matchup was living up to the hype until UConn started to cook in the second half. Hurley and company cruised to a decisive 70-55 win. However, based on the shots both teams took, shot quality had Connecticut winning the game just 14% of the time and St. Mary's winning the game 86% of the time. So how does a team win 70-55 to if they were supposed to win just 14% of the time? Well, there were a few factors at play. St. Mary suffered an injury to Alex Dukas, and Logan Johnson, who was usually an efficient scorer and their best player, only managed to score 9 points on 20% shooting. Adama Sinogo had a hot hand and scored 24 points on 69% shooting. It's not just me saying it, but shot quality. Johnson was expected to score 10 more points and Sinogo 7 fewer points. Again, shot quality's value is based on the shots taken, and over 90 variables are incorporated in the shot quality value for each shot. But when your star player outperforms the other, it makes sense that the Huskies again survived and advanced. And on a weekend where a 1 seed lost to a 16 seed, a 15 seed lost to a 2 seed, and a 1 fell to an 8 seed, survive and advance doesn't sound so bad. Just for UConn, their best player decided to have a great game and outperform expectations, while St. Mary's nursing injured Alex Dukas, their best player, Logan Johnson, was unable to meet expectations from a shot quality standpoint. Trip to the Sweet 16 was a welcome sight for UConn fans, the first for the Huskies since they won their fourth title in 2014. However, like Kobe said, job ain't done, was there a smile about? Well, the Huskies took down their Arkansas Razorbacks in the Sweet 16, 85-66. However, shot quality had this matchup much closer, with each team scoring about 80 points. As for Hurley's squad, Sunogo again outperformed expectations, this time by 5 points. Yet, this was the Jordan Hawkins game. The first-year starter, who went from role player as a freshman to star guard as a sophomore, dropped a cool 24 points. He was expected to score 22 points and place in the 89th percentile in shot quality's points per possession. The shots, at times, were difficult, but Hawkins owns good shot quality points per possession numbers because he is accustomed to hitting those shots. All aspects that go into a Jordan Hawkins shot have been equated for for the whole year. Meanwhile, Arkansas, like St. Mary's, fell flat on offense. 0.89 shot quality points per possession on 11 attempts in the pick and roll destroyed the Razorbacks. UConn performed slightly better than expected regarding shot selection, while Arkansas underperformed significantly. The common denominator in UConn's victories over Arkansas and St. Mary's was their opponent's inability to score near the rim. Now, the opposing team's struggles were probably a result of the size of UConn's Donovan Klingon and Adama Sinogo, and a bit of luck. Overall, UConn is on a roll. The Huskies then faced Drew Timmy and the Gonzaga Bulldogs, and boy was this Elite Eight matchup not even close. The Zags got their doors blown off. They got shelled from downtown. They got ran out of the building. Enter a mean-spirited description of how the Bulldogs performed against UConn. The Huskies dropped 82 points, but posted a 91-burger per shot quality standards. Case in point, outside Tristan Newton, UConn took high percentage shots and hit them. Meanwhile, Gonzaga took some good shots. They finished in the 79th percentile in shot quality's points per session, a far cry from UConn's finishing in the 98th percentile. However, they just didn't go in. The biggest discrepancy was in three-point shooting, a 16-point difference. UConn had nearly the same points from three-pointers in real life and shot quality, something they have done all March Madness. Was the easiest way to stave off elimination in the big dance? Hit your three-pointers and hit them off. Standing in the way of another trip to a title game for the Yukon Huskies was the Miami Hurricanes. The five-seeded Hurricanes took down Indiana, Houston, and Texas to make it to the Final Four. All their victories were also wins regarding shot quality. Like San Diego State on the other side of the bracket, the Hurricanes were a veteran savvy squad. The backcourt duo of Isaiah Wong and Jordan Miller were a laughable 7-1 in March Madness games entering their tilt with the Huskies. For a third straight game, the Huskies' opponents finished the game in the 75th percentile or better in shot quality's points per possession. However, this time, the opponent hit their shots from deep. 
Shot quality expected 21 points from three by the Miami Hurricanes. They scored, well, 21 points from three. Yet, they posted goose eggs in the mid-range and the post up on a combined 14 shots. Arkansas, St. Mary's, and the Zags could have told Miami that was a death sentence. It was a death sentence because the Huskies get their money's worth on their shots. They scored 72 points on 72 expected SQ points. Adama Sonogo again outperformed expectations, but the Huskies also posted nearly identical actual and SQ numbers from deep. The trend over the first five turning games for UConn is a remarkably consistent team, a team that also feeds their hot hand, or hands if you will, getting the ball to their stars Jordan Hawkins and Adama Sonogo in situations where they are comfortable and can score and where they have scored during the entirety of the season. They are a balanced team that has remained in the green in the rim and three SQ points per possession metric outside the Arkansas game, that is. But still, they also don't fold in any aspect, whether it is in the mid range, the post up shots at the rim or three pointers. The Huskies have yet to fall flat in any category completely like Miami did in this game in the post up and the mid range. The balance part is essential. Outside the St. Mary's game, when Sonogo shattered his numerical SQ ceiling, no one singular player was carrying the Huskies from an efficiency standpoint. It was a balanced attack where every single player was getting their own. It's not often that a four seed faces off against a five seed in the NCAA tournament, but that's what went down in April. The Yukon Huskies and the San Diego State Aztecs battled it out for the right to cut down the nets in the title game. For the fifth time in six games, the Huskies scored north of 70 SQ points, but this time against arguably the best defense in the entire tournament. In their final four games, the UConn Huskies dropped 318 points. Shot quality had them scoring 312 points during that span. Talk about consistency. Now let's get back to the game. If you made it this far in the video, I would like to think you know that UConn won this game. Well, they won 76-59 to be exact. And if you follow the pattern in the video, here's where I tell you how UConn got quote unquote lucky. Final SSQ score, 75-74 nail biter in favor of UConn. SQ up, left 14 points on the court via shots from deep and near the rim. And you guessed it, the Huskies did exactly what they were supposed to do on offense. Nearly picture perfect in efficiency. Jordan Hawkins, who shot 50% from deep during the whole tournament, scored four more points than expected, but that is the extent of UConn outperforming. Recap time. The Kukukon Huskies were juggernaut on offense last year. They placed fourth in SQ's adjusted offensive ranking and scored 78.6 points per game, the first class in the country. The spacing, shot making, and shot selection were just outstanding. Pair that with a great rebounding team, and you have a title contender. As far as defense, they were a struggle bus during the middle part of the season. However, the Huskies finished as the 118th best team in defensive shot selection. They held strong in the interior and played well in transition. The 219th ranking in defensive shot making was an eyesore, but the number reverted towards acceptable during March Madness. Plenty of teams were amazing at shot quality metrics, but that's not what making the NCAA tournament so fascinating. If good shots don't find the bottom of the hoop for an extended period, then the trip to a title game could be dead. Plenty of teams each season go cold during a game and never recover. If the tournament were double elimination, they would return and win the next contest by a million. But in the real world, it's all about surviving and advancing. Stay the course and take the best available shot and trust it goes in. And if it doesn't, lock in on defense and make the other team just uncomfortable. And that is what UConn did. They made the other team uncomfortable as they continued to underperform shot quality expectations. And as far as the offense, they trusted their shots, trusted it would go in, and it did. In UConn, they were our national champion during the 2022-23 season.